Hello guys, it's Pedro again, here. And in today's video I would like to freely expand, you know, my thoughts about something that I was thinking the other day, probably because I heard someone mentioning this kind of uh, situation, which is the following. What I would do if I would start my career today in compositing? What are the things that I know now that I didn't know when I was starting back then, many years ago? And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, uh, so I'm just speaking freely here now, okay? So I, I don't have anything written down or anything like that. Um, first of all, I think assessing, like, my trajectory and my career, I've had, like, a, a blessed career with some ups and downs, obviously, but overall very blessed, um, not very common uh, as well, and also coming from my background not very common either because uh, as some of you know I have a, a mechanical engineer background and VFX happened to me sort of by accident as you probably some of you know right so this was not super planned that uh, this would be part of my life but when it happened I really stuck with it and I put my heart and soul and sweat and tears like all of you guys do as well um, but things happen uh, really fast for me and you know, sometimes I find myself like thinking like, okay, so why, 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 why that is and how can I help other people uh, attaining the same, you know? And looking back, one of the things that I remember many years ago, as I said before, that um, I had some things that I had and some things that I didn't have, maybe it's good to start there. So things that I, that I had was a, a super curiosity about like everything that had to do with the software itself on the software domain I'm talking about Nuke of course and I've because of my different backgrounds I've had like uh, you know a clear um, understanding that my past background helped me quite a lot not directly but indirectly helped me quite a lot understanding the software in a way better way I guess because coming from a, an engineering background, I'm used to think um, with systems and dealing with systems and, and graphs and stuff like that, which is, that's exactly what the Nook uh, Note Graph is all about. So my understanding of that kind of stuff came easy uh, in the beginning. Um, I'm not saying that it's super complicated, that you, it's not easy for you. I'm just saying like, what are the things that I, I felt at that time um, that I think are related with my past background. So this is one of them. And uh, I have like a mixed background as well, not only on mechanical engineering, but also as a music producer. And that's actually what um, uh, took me to London. That's a story for another time. I, I told this story many times, so I think you can look it up on uh, online. But um, what I'm saying is, you know, part of my role at that time as a music producer was to de deconstruct an artist's, you know, craft, not craft, but for example, a song, into something that I'm not there to solve or to write the song for them. I was there to help them thinking about the structure of the song that would probably, you know, would, would, would sit better with the majority of the people or, or finding angles or sounds or uh, structures that were either unexpected or that sounded better or uh, just to try something different just for the sake of it get, that, that will probably you know um, open different doors for exploration about other stuff that will make the whole thing better the whole song better right and so you know I, I, I love that job and um, I think I took some of that kind of stuff with me when I started in this career and I started applying that I think not consciously but perhaps unconsciously for myself when I was looking at some shots right one of the things that I remember as a kid um, you know those those images in which you have to find the differences like you have two images that are very similar and you have to find differences um, as a kid I remember my mom giving me a bunch of these uh, maybe probably there because I was I couldn't shut up or whatever so she gave me these, and um, and I was quite good at that kind of stuff like identifying all of these things and I remember like thinking about that example multiple times in the beginning of my career because I was able to identify what is not what's not good with this picture what's wrong with it like you know if I compare this with the, the, the reality what's right about it what's wrong about it you know and a lot of what we do is referencing 
and you, if you not if you don't reference like as as uh, extensively when you're doing comps you should because that's where the ground ground truth is if you want to call it like that right so references is always it should be always what's on your side when you're comping something because that's what the reality is and that's what you want to try to mimic and there's like many different little things that you, you, they're barely noticeable but that's what makes them real you know so i think it helped me um you know having like these two sides it helped me to come up with um with, with uh, maybe have a little, a little bit more understanding on how to understand my job because of these reasons and on top of that, taking into account my technical background, I had like an avid curiosity for learning everything that I could possibly learn. And the more I learned, the more I wanted to learn. Very specific though, very specific for what I wanted to do, which was the software itself and compositing as a craft. I was not looking at outside, right? However, and think about this now, however, one thing that I, um, very early on, by the way, that I, uh, that I start doing, not knowing exactly what that would take me or what that would mean for me, necessarily speaking. But I started learning Python very early on. And at that time, in comparison to today, the documentation that we had available to us was almost inexistent and it was very confusing. And just because I had this background as a mechanical engineer, that didn't help me at all, at all, with that kind of stuff because it was like a completely new thing for me as it, it is perhaps for you, you know, at that time. But in any case, you know, I started doing that kind of stuff as well. So I, very early on, I allied the technical aspect with the visual aspect at the same time. So I was developing, developing both at the same time. And although I had like a really, really hard time understanding Python because of the lack of references and, and, and documentation. And I had like a very hard time at that time, uh, you know, mixing like what the syntax was and what the API was and how you mix these two things that they, they seem like two different things, but at the same time they needed to communicate with each other. So I, I had like a super hard time understanding that kind of stuff many, many years ago, but when it clicked, it clicked for good. Right. And one thing that I noticed is that, okay, this doesn't help me at all become a better artist but it helps me become a better professional, more complete professional, because I can do not only the job for compositing or speeding up the job uh, in certain tasks for that craft, but it also allows me to see the bigger picture and to work for the bigger picture of a company, of a department, right? Like writing pipeline, for example. And because I come with that kind of background in terms of like systems and stuff like that as a mechanical engineer, I could visualize in my mind and, and map it out very quickly, like how a system that is very easy to understand, the, we don't need like all the, the bells and whistles, it, you know, not many graphs, nothing like that, very specific and very practical and very effective or as effective as I could make it at that time with the knowledge that I had. And um, which was not that much, it was enough. I mean, in comparison with some of you, maybe it is, but or he was but i'm telling you sometimes less is more and because i had limitations on my knowledge at that time with python and still today because i'm not a developer i cannot consider myself a developer i, I i've done many many things you know with with python regarding compositing and regarding the effects you know from writing pipeline um, that is still in use uh, these days in some in some companies so i'm told uh, uh, to my surprise, to be honest, but uh, but yeah, that's that's the it seems to be the reality. A color pipeline as well, all that kind of stuff. I, I you know I had experience and I, I worked um, with that kind of stuff, but in building tools extensively as well for my artists, my company, the companies I work for, and my teams mainly. Uh, so I did all of that kind of stuff. But the fact that I didn't have like a complete like in comparison with the proper develop developer, I didn't have that kind of same knowledge that gave me the power of, for lack of a better word, of thinking a little bit outside the box sometimes. So I could get the result that I wanted with the knowledge that I had, which was perhaps sometimes a little bit limited in some cases. It, it didn't uh, stop me from, uh, you know, getting to where I wanted, but I had to put my mind in thinking outside the box because of that reason that I just mentioned, right? So 
long story short to say that I started like developing the technical side and the artistic side at the same time. And because of that, I became perhaps more noticeable because I was able to demonstrate that I was more than just an artist. I could be more valuable for the company to develop, for example, tools or to develop the pipeline over the department. You see what I'm saying? So again, although this happened in this way, I didn't set out myself to do these things like as a premeditated kind of a situation. This happened because I was very curious about all of these things and I kind of understood that I it was sort of like it came easy or easier for me to think about systems in this way and to implement them with the limited knowledge that I had at that time that of course over over the years you know I became more robust but um, again sometimes less is more in the ways that I just described but I think looking back that kind of alliance between technical and artistic from very early on helped me so this is the stuff that I think I had the stuff that I didn't have and I remember vividly thinking about that in the early stages of my career, then then after a while it dissipated a, uh, quite a lot, was the fact that I didn't have like true friendships in the industry that I could talk about or that I could ask questions about the craft, for example, or talking about the craft. At that time in London, um, you know, that's when the, the, the Canada tax regs kicked in more, more intensely and so, um, you know, there were a lot of people and there was a dip in the industry in the, in London at that time. And uh, maybe because of that, maybe because of that allied with the fact that I was new to the craft, that I was new to the industry, I didn't know a lot of people, right? And this, as I said before, this kind of happened to me by chance, by, you know, it was not premeditated, the fact that I started working in VFX. But um, I remember very vividly to, to, to feel exactly what I'm saying, which which was like, if only I had someone to talk to freely without having the idea that I'm bothering someone, that I'm asking too many, too many questions. I never had that feeling that much because I was very careful always to not ask the same question twice. And I put like a, a ton of effort into um, grabbing as much as, as information and be as proficient as I could be in the shortest, uh, shortest amount of time that I could possibly um, do. But uh, but yeah, I remember thinking about this, like if only I had someone, right? If only I had someone. And, uh, and I think many, many years after that, maybe, perhaps, that's maybe what motivated me to build the next level because I knew exactly what I suffered. I knew exactly what I uh, would like to have that I didn't have. And so, you know, that's exactly what I guess I've created in the way that is my vision, in the way that he produced great results for me. And so now I'm passing that kind of stuff to others. And one thing that definitely when I became a supervisor, one thing that really, 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 really helped me, I think to this day in many different forms, because what I'm about to say are transferable skills, is knowing about management and putting like a ton of effort into come up with systems that will make me feel in control at all times. Of course, there are things that happen that are not good. Not everything is good just because you know uh, management, but management gives you the bigger picture, gives you control and gives you, um, you know, a, an assessment and makes you able to predict what comes like a month down the line, a couple of weeks down the line. And with that, you are able to do something before you know, shit hits the fan, as we normally say, right? But if you don't have that visibility, if you not, if you don't have that knowledge, you don't know. You just go about your life on a normal day, and if following orders more than anything else, right? With your artistic uh, side, of course, the, the artistic side that you want to put, either as a uh, as an artist or as a supervisor, current supervisor. But what I see the great majority of the times is people not having this visibility about like. The bigger picture and that comes with project man project management skills and you don't need to believe me you just need to look at the last project the last five projects the last like maybe your entire career like how all are the projects or are how the projects that you are working on go about the management side of things that's where every everything fails right that's if we have like a, a common problem to all disciplines in vfx that's exactly what, what it is all projects tend to fail on the development of the show, every show. And every time that there's a new show coming, 
you would assume that you're not going to repeat the same mistakes again, but once again, they happen, right? And it's normally a, an awful experience for everybody, and it's not my intention today to dive into that. Maybe it's a conversation for another time. But again, just going back to the things that I, I think work well for me, and if I knew this in advance, probably I would put more effort into it. And I'm telling you this now, so you don't have to, um, you know, endure the same things that perhaps I did. Although, as I said before, I, I don't have like much to, to, to complain, quite the opposite about my career. But um, I want you guys to be successful as well. So that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. You know what I mean? Like to give you value in order for you to attain the same or even better results, perhaps, right? That's, that, that's even better. But uh, yeah, so I would say artistic knowledge at the same time as technical knowledge makes you a more complete artist and a more, invaluable, more, a more valuable person, right? As a more valuable artist. Not detracting, you need to be careful of doing this without detracting from your main goal whatever goal might be. If you want to be a TD, be a TD and work your skills up with that kind of objective in mind. If you want to be a supervisor, work your skills up with that objective in mind. And whatever you choose to do to learn or not to learn needs to go on that kind of goal, needs to be attached to that kind of goal. But I would say Python, super helpful. It did great things for my career, so I can tell you enough. Artistic skills that, you know, it's more about experience and you know the world out there when you go out in the street to get a coffee or whatever is filled with free lessons like how you perceive your reality you know where are, w w where is your attention when you look at for example a shadow when you look at a reflection or a refraction whatever you know things about that that happens in your day-to-day -day life so you know take that kind of stuff as free lessons and then project management skills not only when you are already with leadership positions, but start before that, because it's a golden opportunity that you have in your hands to develop those skills ahead of time, because when you go and have that added responsibilities within like a leadership position, what happens is you won't have time to develop them because you're going to be involved in a multitude of new things and you're going to you know, I have like a lot of questions and you're going to be involved in a lot of meetings and we'll be talking with a lot of people and uh, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming, you know, I, again, if you don't have a plan. So if, if, if you have a plan, great, it will help you. But if you don't develop these skills ahead of time and only or only when this time happens, it's going to be a nightmare for you because you won't, you won't, you won't be able to do it, you know. And, uh, you know, we've been helping like a lot of experienced people over the years, hundreds of people really you know, work towards their goals. And we're talking about very experienced people, as I said before, you know, experienced compositors, lead compositors, uh, you know, composing supervisors, VFX supervisors, and even business owners, as I said before. And all of them, they have this in common, which is for whatever reason, they never learn this, 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 um, these subjects. And they know, because they've experienced it, that this is probably what's going to make them, you know, go about their lives, professional lives, I'm talking, in a way better way without the stress as much and looking at the bigger picture always at, at, at all times. And that will then influence their personal life. So when you have these two things aligned, of course, life feels better, right? And uh, yeah, so again, what I would do if I was today, if today was my day of starting my career in compositing, I would do all of this, which is something that I did anyway, but maybe some of them I would start a little bit earlier. And one thing that I didn't mention that I'm going to mention at the end is finding someone, because I didn't have that at that time, finding someone that I would resonate with and do whatever he would take to be on his or her radar and be always involved, befriend this person basically, and to learn with him or her. And if I had to pay, I would pay. <clears throat> you know, I had that desire. My desire was that strong. I wanted to win and uh, I didn't have like, you know, the, the awareness at that time that this could be a possibility. So probably that would be something 
that I would do. And um, yeah, because that's, that's basically what happens. When you are with, involved with the right people, of course, things naturally will ha have, they, they have a better chance that they will happen to you in a more successful way, right? I think anybody can understand that. And so, you know, if you are in this position, if you're not too happy about like your trajectory in your career, think about things in this in this in these terms right and you know be done with excuses i guess maybe this will help you hopefully it will because it was my intention with today's video and if you need help with any of this just click the link in the description and let's hop on the call either with me or someone in my team and let's see if we can help you if we can help you we'll let you know if we cannot help you we'll let you know as well it's that simple and um yeah let's make this year like your best year yet but it starts with you in these ways, okay? The awareness of what, you know, where you are, where you want to be, because that's the fundamental piece for you to then set yourself with a plan and go for action, okay? So I hope you liked today's video and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.